Don Giovanni, Don Giovanni, K. 527, complete title, literally the rake punished, namely Don Giovanni or the libertine punished, is an opera in two acts with music by Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart and Italian libretto by Lorenzo de Ponte. It is based on the legends of Don Juan, a fictional libertine and seducer. It was premiered by the Prague Italian Opera at the National Theatre, of Bohemia, now called the Estates Theatre, on October 29, 1787. De Ponte's libretto was billed as a drama giocoso, a common designation of its time that denotes a mixing of serious and comic action. Mozart entered the work into his catalogue as an opera buffa. Although sometimes classified as comic, it blends comedy, melodrama, and supernatural elements. A staple of the standard operatic repertoire, Don Giovanni for the five seasons 2011 12 through 2015 16 was ninth on the opera base list of the most performed operas worldwide. It has also proved a fruitful subject for writers and philosophers. The opera was commissioned as a result of the overwhelming success of Mozart's trip to Prague in January and February 1787. The subject matter may have been chosen in consideration of the long history of Don Juan operas in Prague. The genre of 18th century Don Juan opera originated in Prague. The libretto of Lorenzo de Ponte was based closely on a libretto by Giovanni Bertotti for the opera Don Giovanni Tenorio, first performed in Venice early in 1787, although he was loath to admit this in memoirs written decades later. Some of the most important elements that he copied were the idea of opening drama with the murder of the Commendatore. In earlier dramas, this incident always appeared somewhere in the middle and the lack of a specification of Seville as the setting, which had been customary in the tradition of Don Juan drama since the appearance of the prototype Don Juan drama El Berlador de Sevilla by Tirso de Molina, written in the early 17th century. For Bertotti, the setting was Vienna, Spain, whereas de Ponte's libretto only specifies a city in Spain. Don Giovanni was originally to have been performed on October 14, 1787 for a visit to Prague of the Archduchess Maria Theresa of Austria niece of the Emperor Joseph II, and her new husband, Prince Anthony of Saxony, however, the production could not be prepared in time and La Nozze di Figaro was substituted instead on the order of the Emperor himself. The score was completed on 28 or October 29, 1787 after de Ponte was recalled to Vienna to work on another opera. Reports about the last-minute completion of the overture conflict, some say it was completed the day before the premiere, some on the very day. More likely it was completed the day before, in light of the fact that Mozart recorded the completion of the opera on 28th of October. The score calls for double woodwinds, two horns, two trumpets, three trombones, alto, tenor, bass, timpani, basso continuo for the recitatives, and the usual string section. The composer also specified occasional special musical effects. For the ballroom scene at the end of the first act, Mozart calls for two onstage ensembles to play separate dance music in synchronization with the pit orchestra, each of the three groups playing in its own meter a three-quarters minuet, a two-fourths contradance and a fast three-eighths peasant dance, accompanying the dancing of the principal characters. In Act Two, Giovanni is seen to play the mandolin, accompanied by pizzicato strings. In the same act, two of the commendatore's interventions, and, area accompanied by a wind chorale of oboes, clarinets, bassoons, and trombones, with cellos and basses playing from the string section. The opera was first performed on October 29, 1787 in Prague under its full title of Il di Soluto Punito Ossia Il Don Giovanni, Drama Giocoso and Duati, The Rake Punished, or Don Giovanni, a drama giocoso and two acts. The work was rapturously received, as was often true of Mozart's work in Prague. The Prager Ober Postemt Zeitung reported, Connoisseurs and musicians say that Prague has never heard the like, and the opera, is extremely difficult to perform. The provincial Nachrichten of Vienna reported, Herr Mozart conducted in person and was welcomed joyously and jubilantly by the numerous gathering. Mozart also supervised the Vienna premiere of the work, which took place on May 7, 1788. For this production, he wrote two new arias with corresponding recitatives Don Adavio's aria, K. 548. Composed on 24th of April for the tenor Francesco Morella, Elvira Zaria, K. 540C, composed on 30th of April for the soprano Caterina Cavalieri, and the duet between Leporello and Serlina, K. 540B, composed on 28th of April. He also made some cuts in the finale in order to make it shorter and more incisive, the most important of which is the section where Anna and Ottavio, Elvira, 
Zerlina, and Macedo, Leporello reveal their plans for the future. In order to connect, it must have been the ghost she met, directly to the moral of the story, this is the end which befalls to evildoers, Mozart composed a different version of, so the wretch can stay down there with Proserpina and Pluto. These cuts are very seldom performed in theaters or recordings. The opera's final ensemble was generally omitted until the early 20th century, a tradition that apparently began very early on. According to the 19th century Bohemian memoirist Wilhelm Kua, the final ensemble was only presented at the very first performance in Prague, then never heard again during the original run. It does not appear in the Viennese libretto of 1788, thus, the ending of the first performance in Vienna without the ensemble as depicted in the film Amadeus must be an accurate portrayal. Undoubtedly, this practice was sanctioned by Mozart himself. Nonetheless, the final ensemble is almost invariably performed in full today. Modern productions sometimes include both the original aria for Don Ottavio, and its replacement from the first production in Vienna that was crafted to suit the capabilities of the tenor Francesco Morella. Elvira's is usually retained as well. The duet in the whole accompanying scene involving Zerline and Leporello from the Viennese version is almost never included. In modern-day productions, Macedo and the Commendatore are typically played by different singers, unless limited by such things as finance or rehearsal time and space, although the same singer played both roles in both the Prague and Vienna premieres, and the final scene's chorus of demons after the Commendatore's exit gives the singer time for a costume change before entering as Macedo for the sextet. The instrumentation is Don Giovanni, a young, arrogant, and sexually promiscuous nobleman, Abuses and outrages everyone else in the cast until he encounters something he cannot kill, beat up, dodge, or outwit. The overture begins with a thundering D minor cadence, followed by a short sequence which leads into a light-hearted D major allegro. Scene 1, The Garden of the Commendatore. Leprello, Don Giovanni's servant, grumbles about his demanding master and daydreams about being free of him, dash night and day I slave away. He is keeping watch while Don Giovanni is in the Commendatore's house attempting to seduce or rape the Commendatore's daughter, Donna Anna. Don Giovanni enters the garden from inside the house, pursued by Donna Anna. Don Giovanni is masked and Donna Anna tries to hold him and to unmask him, shouting for help. Trio, dash do not hope, unless you kill me, that I shall ever let you run away. He breaks free and she runs off as the Commendatore enters the garden. The Commandatore blocks Don Giovanni's path and forces him to fight a duel. Don Giovanni kills the Commandatore with his sword and escapes with Leporello. Donna Anna, returning with her fiancé, Don Ottavio, is horrified to see her father lying dead in a pool of his own blood. She makes Don Ottavio swear vengeance against the unknown murderer. Duet, Dasha, swear to avenge that blood if you can. Scene 2 a public square outside Don Giovanni's palace Leporello tells Don Giovanni that he, Giovanni, is leading a rotten life, Don Giovanni reacts angrily. They hear a woman, Donna Elvira, singing of having been abandoned by her lover, on whom she is seeking revenge, Dasha, who could ever tell me? Don Giovanni starts to flirt with her, but it turns out he is the former lover she is seeking. The two recognize each other and she reproaches him bitterly. He shoves Leporello forward, ordering him to tell Donna Elvira the truth about him, and then hurries away. Leporello tells Donna Elvira that Don Giovanni is not worth her feelings for him. He is unfaithful to everyone, his conquests include 640 women and girls in Italy, 231 in Germany, 100 in France, 91 in Turkey, but in Spain, 1003, Madamina, il catalogo e questo, my dear lady, this is the catalogue. In a frequently cut recitative, Donna Elvira vows vengeance. Scene 3, The Open Country. A marriage procession with Macedo and Serlina enters. Don Giovanni and Leporello arrive soon after. Don Giovanni is immediately attracted to Serlina, and he attempts to remove the jealous Macedo by offering to host a wedding celebration at his castle. On realizing that Don Giovanni means to remain behind with Serlina, Macedo becomes angry, dash I understand. Yes, my lord but is forced to leave. Don Giovanni and Serlina are soon alone and he immediately begins his seductive arts, duet, La si darem la mano, there we will entwine our hands. Donna Elvira arrives and thwarts the seduction, dash flee from the traitor. She leaves with Serlina. Don Javio and Donna Anna enter, plotting vengeance on the still unknown murderer of Donna Anna's father. Donna Anna, unaware that she is speaking to her attacker, 
pleads for Don Giovanni Schalp. Don Giovanni, relieved that he is unrecognized, readily promises it, and asks who has disturbed her peace. Before she can answer, Donna Elvira returns and tells Donna Anna and Donna Davio that Don Giovanni is a false-hearted seducer. Don Giovanni tries to convince Donna Davio and Donna Anna that Donna Elvira is insane, quartet, dash don't trust him, oh sad one. As Don Giovanni leaves, Donna Anna suddenly recognizes him as her father's murderer and tells Donna Davio the story of his intrusion, claiming that she was deceived at first because she was expecting a night visit from Donna Davio himself but managed to fight Don Giovanni off after discovering the imposture, long recitative exchange between Donna Anna and Don Ottavio. She repeats her demand that he avenge her and points out that he will be avenging himself as well, Aria, or Sicil in ore repire me vol say, now you know who wanted to rob me of my honor. In the Vienna version, Don Ottavio, not yet convinced, Donna Anna having only recognized Don Giovanni's voice, not seen his face, resolves to keep an eye on his friend, Dash on her peace my peace depend. Leporello informs Don Giovanni that all the guests of the peasant wedding are in Don Giovanni's house and that he distracted Masetto from his jealousy, but that Selina, returning with Donna Elvira, made a scene and spoiled everything. However, Don Giovanni remains cheerful and tells Leporello to organize a party and invite every girl he can find. Don Giovanni's champagne aria, dash till they are tipsy. They hasten to his palace. Scene 4 a garden outside Don Giovanni's palace Serlina follows the jealous Masetto and tries to pacify him, dash beat, oh beat me, handsome Masetto, but just as she manages to persuade him of her innocence, Don Giovanni's voice from off stage startles and frightens her. Masetto hides, resolving to see for himself what Serlina will do when Don Giovanni arrives. Serlina tries to hide from Don Giovanni, but he finds her and attempts to continue the seduction until he stumbles upon Masetto's hiding place. Confused but quickly recovering, Don Giovanni reproaches Masetto for leaving Zerlina alone, and returns her temporarily to him. Don Giovanni then leads both off stage to his ballroom. Three masked guests, the disguised Don Ottavio, Donna Anna, and Donna Elvira, enter the garden. From a balcony, Leporello invites them to his master's party. They accept the invitation and Leporello leaves the balcony. Alone, Don Ottavio and Donna Anna pray for protection, Donna Elvira for vengeance, trio, dash may the just heavens protect us. Scene 5, Don Giovanni's Ballroom As the merriment, featuring three separate chamber orchestras on stage, proceeds, Leporello distracts Masetto by dancing with him, while Don Giovanni leads Zelina off stage to a private room and tries to assault her. When Zelina screams for help, Don Giovanni drags Leporello on stage from the room, accuses Leporello of assaulting Serlina himself, and threatens to kill him. The others are not fooled. Don Ottavio produces a pistol and points it at Don Giovanni, and the three guests unmask and declare that they know all. But despite being denounced and menaced from all sides, Don Giovanni remains calm and escapes for the moment. Scene 1, Outside Donna Elvira's House Leporello threatens to leave Don Giovanni, but his master calms him with a peace offering of money, duet, a via buffone. Go on, fool. Wanting to seduce Donna Elvira's maid, and believing that she will trust him better if he appears in lower class clothes, Don Giovanni orders Leporello to exchange cloak and hat with him. Donna Elvira comes to her window, trio, Apache, injusto por, ah, be quiet on just heart. Seeing an opportunity for a game, Don Giovanni hides and sends Leporello out in the open wearing Don Giovanni's cloak and hat. From his hiding place, Don Giovanni sings a promise of repentance, expressing a desire to return to her and threatening to kill himself if she does not take him back, while Leporello poses as Don Giovanni and tries to keep from laughing. Donna Elvira is convinced and descends to the street. Leporello, continuing to pose as Don Giovanni, leads her away to keep her occupied while Don Giovanni serenades her maid with his mandolin. Davy any alla finestra, ah, come to the window. Before Don Giovanni can complete his seduction of the maid, Masetto and his friends arrive, looking for Don Giovanni in order to kill him. Don Giovanni poses as Leporello, whose clothes he is still wearing, and joins the posse, pretending that he also hates Don Giovanni. After cunningly dispersing Masetto's friends, Don Giovanni aria, mitadi voi que vadano, half of you go this way. The others, go that way. Don Giovanni takes Masetto's weapons away, beats him up, and runs off, laughing. Zerlina arrives and consoles the bruised and battered Masetto, Vedrai Carino, you'll see, dear one. Scene 2, 
a dark courtyard. Leporello abandons Donna Elvira. Sextet, Sola, Sola in Builoco, all alone in this dark place. As he tries to escape, he bumps into Donna Davio and Donna Anna. Zerlina and Misetto also enter the scene. Everyone mistakes Leporello for Don Giovanni, whose clothes he is still wearing. They surround Leporello and threaten to kill him. Donna Elvira tries to protect the man who she thinks is Don Giovanni, claiming that he is her husband and begging the others to spare him. Leporello takes off Don Giovanni's cloak and reveals his true identity. He begs for mercy and, seeing an opportunity, runs off. Leporello Aria, a pieta signori mia, ah, have mercy, my lords. Don Ottavio is now convinced that Don Giovanni is the one who murdered Donna Anna's father, the deceased Commendatore. He swears vengeance, il mio tesoro, my treasure, though in the Vienna version this was cut. In the Vienna production of the opera, Zerlina follows Laparello and recaptures him. Threatening him with a razor, she ties him to a stool. He attempts to sweet talk her out of hurting him. Duet, per questu a menine, for these hands of yours. Zerlina goes to find Misetto and the others, Leporello escapes again before she returns. This scene, marked by low comedy, is rarely performed today. Also in the Vienna production, Donna Elvira is still furious at Don Giovanni for betraying her, but she also feels sorry for him. Mitra di Calalma and Grata, that ungrateful wretch betrayed. Scene 3, A Graveyard with the Statue of the Commendatore. Don Giovanni wanders into a graveyard. Leporello happens along and the two are reunited. Leporello tells Don Giovanni of his brush with danger, and Don Giovanni laughingly taunts him, saying that he took advantage of his disguise as Leporello by trying to seduce one of Leporello's girlfriends. The voice of the statue interrupts and warns Don Giovanni that his laughter will not last beyond sunrise. At the command of his master, Leporello reads the inscription upon the statue's base, Here am I waiting for revenge against the scoundrel who killed me. Delempio che mi trasa al paso estremo che attendo la vendetta. The servant trembles, but Don Giovanni scornfully orders him to invite the statue to dinner, and threatens to kill him if he does not. Leporello makes several attempts to invite the statue to dinner but is too frightened to complete the invitation. Duet, oh, stat with gentilissima, almost noble statue. Don Giovanni invites the statue to dinner himself. Much to his surprise, the statue nods its head and responds affirmatively. Scene 4, Donna Anna's Room Don Ottavio pressures Donna Anna to marry him, but she thinks it is inappropriate so soon after her father's death. He accuses her of being cruel, and she assures him that she loves him, and is faithful, non me dear, tell me not. Scene 5, Don Giovanni's Chambers Don Giovanni revels in the luxury of a great meal, served by Leporello, and musical entertainment during which the orchestra plays music from popular, at the time, Late 18th century operas, O Guanto on Cibel Jubilo from Vicente Martin y Soler's Unicosa Rara, 1786, Come on Agnello from Giuseppe Sardi's Fra I do Litigandi il Terzo Gode, 1782, and finally, Non Pu on Dry from Mozart's own The Marriage of Figaro, 1786. Leporello complains that he is sick and tired of hearing Mozart's aria everywhere all the time. Finale Gialla Mensa Preparata, already the table is prepared. Donna Elvira enters, saying that she no longer feels resentment against Don Giovanni, only pity for him. L'ultima prova della mio, the final proof of my love. Don Giovanni, surprised, asks what she wants, and she begs him to change his life. Don Giovanni taunts her and then turns away, praising wine and women as the support and glory of humankind, sostegno e gloria d'umanita. Hurt and angry, Donna Elvira gives up and leaves Dot off stage. She screams in sudden terror. Don Giovanni orders Leporello to see what has upset her, when he does, he also cries out, and runs back into the room, stammering that the statue has appeared as promised. An ominous knocking sounds at the door. Leporello, paralyzed by fear, cannot answer it, so Don Giovanni opens it himself, revealing the statue of the Commendatore. With the rhythmic chords of the overture, now reharmonized with diabolic diminished sevenths accompanying the Commendatore, Don Giovanni. A senar tecum invitasti, Don Giovanni. You invited me to dine with you, the statue offers a last chance to repent, but Don Giovanni adamantly refuses. The statue disappears and Don Giovanni cries out in pain and terror as he is surrounded by a chorus of demons, who carry him down to hell. Leporello, watching from under the table, also cries out in fear. 
Walker, Donna Anna, Donna Tavio, Donna Elvira, Zerlina, and Macedo arrive, searching for the villain. They find instead Leporello hiding under the table, shaken by the supernatural horror he has witnessed. He assures them that no one will ever see Don Giovanni again. The remaining characters announce their plans for the future, Donna Anna and Donna Davio will marry when Donna Anna's year of mourning is over, Donna Elvira will withdraw from society for the rest of her life, Zerlina and Masetta will finally go home for dinner, and Leporello will go to the tavern to find a better master. The concluding ensemble delivers the moral of the opera, such as the end of the evildoer, the death of a sinner always reflects his life, questo e il fin di chief amal, e de perfidi la morte alla vita e sempre equal. As mentioned above, the final ensemble was customarily omitted from productions for over a century beginning with the original run in Prague, but it started to be performed again frequently in the 20th century and is now as usually included in productions off opera. The return to D major and the innocent simplicity of the last few bars conclude the opera. A screen adaptation of the opera was made under the title Don Giovanni in 1979 directed by Joseph Losey. The Danish philosopher Søren Kierkegaard wrote a long essay in his book Enten, Eller in which he argues, writing under the pseudonym of his character A, that among all classic works Don Giovanni stands highest. Charles Guno wrote that Mozart's Don Giovanni is a work without blemish, of uninterrupted perfection. The finale, in which Don Giovanni refuses to repent, has been a captivating philosophical and artistic topic for many writers including George Bernard Shaw, who in Man and Superman parodied the opera, with explicit mention of the Mozart score for the finale scene between the commendatory and Don Giovanni. Gustave Flaubert called Don Giovanni, along with Hamlet and the Sea, the three finest things God ever made. E.T.A. Hoffman also wrote a short story derived from the opera, Don Juan, in which the narrator meets Donna Anna and describes Don Juan as an aesthetishero rebelling against God and society. In some Germanic and other languages, Leporello's catalog aria provided the name list for concertina folded printed matter, as used for brochures, photo albums, computer printouts and other continuous stationery. The sustained popularity of Don Giovanni has resulted in extensive borrowings and arrangements of the original. The most famous and probably the most musically substantial is the operatic fantasy, Reminiscence de Don Juan by Franz Liszt. The minuet from the finale of Act I, transcribed by Moritz Miskowski, also makes an incongruous appearance in the manuscript of Liszt's fantasy on themes from Mozart's Marriage of Figaro and Don Giovanni, and Sigismund Thalberg uses the same minuet, along with in his, Opus 42. Also makes an appearance in the Clavierubung of Ferruccio Busoni, under the title, Variation Study After Mozart. Chopin wrote variations on La Cidar and La Mano, the duet between Don Giovanni and Serlina, for piano and orchestra. Beethoven and Don C. also wrote variations on the same theme. And Beethoven, in his Diabelli Variations, cites Laparello's aria in Variation 22. Pyotr Ilyich Tchaikovsky always regarded Don Giovanni, and its composer, with awe. In 1855, Mozart's original manuscript had been purchased in London by the mezzo-soprano Pauline Viardo, who was the teacher of Tchaikovsky's one-time unofficial fiancée Desiree Ardet, whom Viardo may have persuaded not to go through with her plan to marry the composer. Viardo kept the manuscript in a shrine in her Paris home where it was visited by many people. Tchaikovsky visited her when he was in Paris in June 1886, and said that when looking at the manuscript, he was in the presence of divinity. So it is not surprising that the centenary of the opera in 1887 would inspire him to write something honoring Mozart. Instead of taking any themes from Don Giovanni, however, he took four lesser-known works by Mozart and arranged them into his fourth orchestral suite, which he called Mozartiana. The baritone who sang the title role in the centenary performance of Don Giovanni in Prague that year was Mariano Badile Ramos, the man Desiree Ardet married instead of Tchaikovsky. In addition to instrumental works, allusions to Don Giovanni also appear in a number of operas, Niklas of Offenbach's The Tales of Hoffman sings the snatch of Leporello's, and Rossini alludes to the Commendatore's music for Salim's entrance in Il Turco in Italia. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.